Hi guys and welcome to Total Technic. In today's video we're going to be doing a full coolant change. The car we're working on today is the Audi A6, this is the C6 version with the 2 litre TDI engine. Uh, this same process applies for quite a few models across the uh, Audi, VW, Seat and Skoda range uh, because they all share the same basic uh, variant of the engine of the 2 litre TDI. Uh, so if you've got one of those, chances are this video should be more than enough to see you through the entire process. So let's take a look at what's involved. So the job we're doing today we're going to be doing as per the Audi workshop manual which means we're going to be using one of the uh, coolant vacuum systems uh, to actually ensure that we don't get any air locks in the system. Also make, uh, makes it uh, kind of a lot easier and a little bit quicker to actually do the process as well. If you don't have one of these already, um, this, is, this is an example of one of the kind of cheaper kits that you can buy on places like eBay uh, and Amazon, things like that. And this kit I think was £25, which is what, $32, $34, uh, something like that. So not very expensive and you can actually get cheaper ones than that as well. This is kind of a, a mid-range budget version if you like. Um, so you can get them for kind of £15, £16, pounds, around $20 for the for even cheaper ones. Uh, so they are a cheap bit of kit and uh, unfortunately you will need an air compressor to be able to use this kit. Uh, but as you'll see uh, as we go on uh, it really does uh, make life a lot easier and it does ensure uh, that you're not going to get any air locks in the system which these cars are unfortunately quite prone to. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind as you may have to buy one of these kits if you don't already have one and you want to do it as per the Audi workshop instructions. Uh, you can follow along with our process uh, without this kit and then obviously when we use the kit to, uh, to refill you can manually refill it um, through the uh, coolant expansion bottle instead of using this tool. That's no problem Problem at all uh, but this is a great bit of kit for ensuring that you don't get the airlock so so do bear that in mind. The uh, first thing we're going to do is just uh, remove the uh, lid on your uh, expansion tank. Don't actually need to uh, remove it you can uh, just leave it slightly off as long as the, uh, the air can get in there that's absolutely fine and uh, that'll allow the other uh, system to drain down uh, more effectively uh, when we remove the coolant uh, line from the uh, radiator which we're going to do next. Okay, so next thing you want to do is uh, get underneath the car. Uh, obviously you will have to remove your under tray if you still have that fitted. Um, that's fairly straightforward. It's just a series of uh, flathead screws. Uh, just follow them around and drop your engine tray down. I'm sure if you're doing coolant change you're, you're capable of working that one out for yourself. So what we're looking at is uh, the inside of the, uh, the radiator uh, right here and on the um, left side you can see we've got this hose. Now I've already actually um, disconnected this, There's a little bit left over, so I popped it back on, uh, but I have actually disconnected this already um, because uh, I was in, actually in the middle of uh, doing the coolant change when my colleague came in and said, oh what are you doing? Said, oh coolant change, I should film that, right okay, so uh, so here we are. So um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll show you how this, uh, how this pipe's uh, removed and kind of how it works if that makes any sense. Um, and then you can kind of um, kind of have to use your imagination on, on kind of forward from, from that point. Uh, but this is the hose that we need to, uh, to get removed um, to actually drain the coolant from the system. And obviously before you pull that off you want to make sure that you've got a, uh, a tray uh, in situ to, uh, to uh, catch the uh, coolant that, that comes out of the system. So I've got the luxury of um, having this uh, detached so I can show you how this works. The, the key to this is this metal clip uh, that you can see that kind of runs down the uh, centre of it. If you look carefully, as this runs down, it's got a little bent end, and it's exactly the same on the other side. And when you push that up, this bent end comes up and actually snaps into place, uh, locks uh, against uh, this little kind of ridge just in there. So what you'd have to do is from the back, is get a kind of a screwdriver in there, and what you want to do is kind of lift it, lift it up, and get it into this locked out position uh, on both sides. A little tip for you, uh, once you've got it up into that position, sometimes it's easier uh, when removing it and uh, also when reinstalling it, just to actually pop that off. Remove that clip altogether, because what you'll find is when you're wrestling with this, uh, with this pipe, uh, you can accidentally keep pressing this down and you have to pull it back up again, etc, 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 to re repeat, you know, keep repeating the process. So it might be easier for you just to pop that off temporarily. You can't put it on the wrong way because uh, the... Um, they kind of bend in the opposite directions so you can see that's like that if I spin it around the other way it's still like that if that makes any sense still still faces forward and backward on the other one uh, so you can't put it on the uh, the wrong way so don't worry about that so just pop it off get that out the way and uh, your your pipe will still be connected is the, uh, the connection uh, up here so your pipe will still be locked onto there so you'll get rid of that clip move that put that to one side 
Now to remove this, uh, they, they are on really, really tight. And what you've got to do is obviously pull on it and wobble up and down, up and down, then side to side, side to side, up and down, up and down, up and down, until eventually it will uh, pop off in, in, and then obviously your coolant will start to drain. But they are on really tight, so you do have to, uh, to wrestle with them uh, pretty hard. Now one thing you can use, which is quite, quite helpful, is whether you guys can see it, just on the uh, bottom, there's actually one on the front and rear. Just on the bottom left hand corner there, you've got like a little uh, little bit that sticks out. What you can do is you can use that as like a depth gauge to see how far you're getting. So if you keep your eye on that before you start, you'll see it's kind of down in there somewhere. And as you pull it out somewhere, when it basically gets level with the uh, this kind of radiator frame here, you know it's going to, uh, that's what that's the stage when it's going to come out. But it is a millimetre by millimetre job, you know, sometimes you can spend 15, 20 minutes on those, they can be really, really stubborn, it's a real pain. Uh, but do stick with it, get that removed, let all of the coolant drain down from there. Another thing to point out, if you've jacked your car up, obviously we're doing this on the, on the ramp today, so we've got the car nice and level. Uh, if you've jacked the, uh, the front of the car up, and then it might be an idea when you've got this uh, draining down uh, to drop it back down level, provided your um, tray will fit underneath, uh, just to ensure that you're getting uh, the drain and obviously the angle's not going to hold in the coolant in any little pockets. That's, that's worth bearing in mind as well. Okay, so next I'm going to get rid of the, uh, the engine cover. Just put that to one side. Okay, next come to your coolant expansion tank and uh, remove the, uh, the screw at the front. Next, lift up your, uh, your current expansion tank. Uh, there's a little uh, tab that fits in at the back there, uh, just in uh, this section here, there's a little uh, tab on the plastic that sits in there. So what you've got to do is lift up, whilst kind of wiggling it forward, and it will uh, detach like so. So next, if you uh, lift your current expansion tank up, I've got this electrical connector on the bottom here. Just get that removed and just tuck that uh, safely out of the way for the time being. So now what we want to do is we actually want to lift this uh, up out of the way. Obviously this is uh, empty now, so it doesn't really matter what we do too much with it. Uh, but if you lift it up and just kind of hook, hook this in behind there, somewhere like that, uh, just to give us a bit more access. Oh, that's perfect. Put it there. Uh, it's going to give us a bit of access to the, uh, the bit that we're going to do next, uh, which is the, uh, the cooler at the bottom. Okay, now looking down into the uh, engine, this is the uh, compartment. This is where we just removed the, uh, the uh, coolant reservoir from. Uh, we can see the uh, oil cooler. Ba -boom. Excuse my hand down. It's this thing here with kind of uh, like fins on the side of it. And you can see that there's uh, several hoses, a couple of hoses that you can see uh, coming off of the uh, top of it. What we we're going to be doing in a second is removing one of these hoses. However, uh, before we do that, just give us a little bit more access. See, so we've got these uh, cables in the way just here, and uh, we've got a little uh, nut in the middle that holds this bracket into place. So we're going to remove that nut. That will allow us to get this uh, bracket out of the way. Gives a little bit more space. Okay, so looking at your uh, oil cooler down here, you've got two pipes uh, that run off it. You can remove either, to be honest, um, but we'll do it as per Audi Workshop uh, manual. So this one here, which is kind of the outermost one, uh, if you look at where that runs, that actually runs across uh, it straight into the other uh, top of the engine. Now, if I give that a wobble, you'll see that, where that kind of attaches to the engine. The other one uh, comes up and actually connects into a T piece. You can't really see it too well there, but you'll be able to feel this yourself. This comes in and kind of connects to, into the side of a pipe, so it goes directly into a T section, and that's the, uh, that's the, that's the one, as per Audi Workshop, uh, that we're going to be disconnecting. Okay, so if you uh, before you detach it, if you have a look kind of directly below it, uh, you can see that the uh, kind of the sub front subframe uh, kind of sits um, almost directly below it. So basically when you uh, disconnect this you're going to get a load of coolant uh, that's going to um, drip down and it's going to be basically dripping off of the um, uh, front subframe there. So what you've got to do is uh, ideally if you've got a second one put a second drip tray under that area 
Uh, if not, you can have to move your original one to that area. And you actually get quite a lot of coolant uh, out of this as well. So don't skip this step, this is actually very important. Uh, like I said before, this is as per Audi Workshop uh, manual. Uh, you'll get a fair bit of uh, coolant come out of there, so it is an important step. Okay, and you'll probably find, uh, as we've got on this one, so it's actually very, very tight to begin with. That's uh, so what we're going to do is go around the, uh, the edge of it uh, using the, uh, the hook tool. Uh, you want to do this very carefully because obviously uh, you always want to point it at a, kind of an inward facing angle. If you try and prise it at an outward facing angle, you're going to put it through the, uh, the, the side wall of the hose. So you've got to be very careful uh, when you use this. This is a, a good way to kind of uh, ease it off. Uh, as I mentioned before, I've actually already drained the coolant out of this. When I did it last time, I actually disconnected the uh, the, the other hose. Uh, but as, as I'm uh, going by the workshop, uh, I want to show it up to you on this second hose. So I've got to I've removed both today, but but there we go. Uh, so the other one's already uh, eased off, but we do exactly the same process uh, on this uh, on this one here. Okay, so that's uh, that's removed for us. Uh, like I say, uh, I've already drained this, but I mean you're going to get probably oh, a good liter out of there, uh, maybe a little bit more. Uh, so when you do, when you do this, uh, you'll literally have it uh, pouring out. But like I said, I've done this earlier today. Um, I'm doing this just to uh, to show you. Uh, so what we're going to do is let that all drain down uh, fully. And then once it's all drained down, have a good wipe around on your uh, subframe. Uh, get that nice and dry and then once you're happy that all that's drained out uh, again if you've jacked your car up put it down level that might help you get a little bit more out uh, but once you're happy uh, that everything's come out from there then what you do is you put this hose back on put the clip back on and you're finished down there and remember to put your uh, your little bracket back on with the uh, 10 mil bolt as well Okay, so once you've uh, refitted the, um, the hose safely back onto your oil cooler, you're going to be refitting this hose next. And there's one very important uh, bit to, to look at, to kind of understand how it works, which will aid you when you come to, to putting this back on, and that's this, uh, this little metal clip in the middle just here. Now, uh, when you first put it in, it'll be quite loose in the hole. If you kind of look at it sideways, you can see it's quite deep in the hole. But as, you, as we push it, we're actually going to put this, uh, leave this clip in situ. Uh, when you fit it and then what, what will happen is it should snap into place and you, and you need that kind of that audible click to know that it's uh, locked into position that makes sense when we're doing it but basically what, what you want to realize is when you first put it on it'll be like that and as you as you start pushing it up obviously that, it'll start to force this out and uh, when it's kind of forced all the way out it'll be somewhere around flush in this uh, in this little uh, rectangular gap here the metal will be somewhere near flush. But obviously when it snaps in, that will go into about there. So it's quite a subtle difference. That's what you'll be, uh, that's what you'll be looking for. And you need to check it once you've got the click to check that it looks like that on both sides. So you know, neither side is kind of still poking out like this. Both sides are in nice and flat like that. Like I said, it makes sense as we go on. Uh, have a look at that and how that kind of works. Uh, for yourself um, before we try and uh, put it back on and like I say when we come to put it back on uh, if you kind of understand how this works it will help you a lot to ensure you get it snapped into place properly. Okay now we don't want to fit it uh, bone dry uh, you'll probably might well, well still be wet uh, but uh, I've actually drained this yesterday and refilling it again this morning so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some coolant uh, ideally neat if you can because the neater stuff is kind of a little bit thicker and slimier and when it's watered down, but it doesn't matter, you can use the watered down stuff as well uh, if that's what you've got available. And just give a good coating to the uh, to the inside of the pipe there. I'm not sure happy that that's good and wet. Then we'll do the same to the uh, the end of the pipe up here. And get a good amount of the moisture out around the outside on both of these. You don't want to do it bone dry because that's because these are hard to get hard enough 
uh, to get on and off at the best of times. Uh, so you kind of want to give, give yourself as much kind of help as you can get really. So get, get both of them nice and wet and then we'll, uh, we'll have a go at fitting them back together. Okay, so now it's uh, nice and lubricated. I'm going to put my clip uh, back on into situ. I'm just going to put it at the higher, um, at the high setting. So it's got the gap at the uh, at the top uh, to begin with. And then what you want to do is just start the process of wiggling it up, down, left, right, etc., etc., until we uh, until we get it on a little bit. Once we're on a little bit, I'm just going to push my uh, my clip down, and I know that I've got a, while, a little while to uh, to go on that. So again, you want to keep an eye on, and you won't be able to see it from the side you're on, unfortunately. Uh, when you're looking at it, you'll be looking at it from uh, this side, the side that I'm looking at, and you'll be able to see the uh, the, the metal clip uh, quite clearly there. So what you want to do is just keep uh, keep working it, keep working it until uh, eventually it might take a few minutes, and they can be just as hard to put on as they are to get off, unfortunately, sometimes harder. And uh, obviously we've got the luxury of being uh, on the uh, the ramp today. If you're lying on your back um, with the car jacked up, this can be a real real pain of a job. Uh, but do stick with it. It's literally a millimetre by millimetre job. Okay. Now, as you uh, as you heard uh, when I was uh, forcing that forward, we've got that nice uh, that nice snap noise, uh, which shows you that it's clicked clicked into place. And if you kind of rewind it, it went so you can kind of hear it snapping in one side then the other, you know, kind of almost immediately. So I'm pretty confident uh, that it's snapped in uh, successfully uh, into its um, into the little grooves there. Uh, I am going to uh, double check this uh, with a mirror just before we uh, before we leave it permanently to make sure that I'm happy in there and I'll give it another good wobble. But that's what you're looking for, and that's why you've got to push the that clip down. You, you push it up, push the pipe on a little bit then push that clip down into the locked position and then force it forward and that will give you that click. Now that's per Audi uh, workshop manual uh, instructions uh, but that's what you do and it's that click uh, that you need to listen out for. So next we're going to put the uh, coolant expansion tank back into situ so you can reconnect the electrical connector. Fit the uh, front, hook that in. Can be quite tricky to get in sometimes. There he goes, like so. And once that's done, uh, of course, just zip your uh, your torque screw back in there. Okay, so now we're going to connect up the uh, the coolant uh, tool. Uh, this is a kind of a simplified version of the um, the tool that Audi use in their workshop. The principles are exactly the same. So basically, the way that this tool works is uh, for for connecting it. It's got this uh, spindle on it and this rubber section here. As you tighten this, what this does it actually makes this get slowly thicker and thicker and thicker. So what you want to do is you've got these three uh, uh, three little rubber adapters of varying widths. So what you want to do is you want to find the one that's going to fit inside your expansion tank. Now that would just fit, um, but that's not going to be any good. So we don't want it to just fit. We've got to make sure it goes inside. So yeah, that one fits. Probably got a millimetre on either side. So I'm going to use the uh, the smallest one from the kit uh, in this example. Next, uh, you want to grab the little um, kind of vacuum pump section and just snap that into place, like so. That's ready to connect our air line. So the next thing to do before we actually put any uh, compressed air into the uh, into the system, uh, you need to mix up your uh, coolant, and obviously we want to make sure you're using the uh, the correct coolant for your car. Uh, this is a G12. It normally says it on the top of the cap there. It's worn off a bit. This is G12. Uh, the more uh, up-to-date version of that is G13. I don't think they make G12 anymore, or if they do, it's quite hard to get. Uh, but if using the genuine stuff, uh, G13 is probably the uh, the replacement stuff that you'll be putting in. Um, or there, if you need a cheaper alternative, there's lots of uh, companies out there, loads of them, like Comma, that do kind of quite uh, good pre-mixed products. Uh, but assuming you're mixing your own and you've, you've selected the correct coolant for your car, uh, one quick thing to, uh, to, to note, 
is uh, ideally you shouldn't use uh, tap water, especially if you use in, uh, live in an area that has uh, hard water. Uh, what you should do, uh, ignore the brand, uh, you can see this one's called mixing water, uh, but lots of companies make this. You just want distilled water or deionized water. Uh, either will do the job. Much, much better than, than tap water. Tap water is um, full of um, uh, deposits and minerals. And what will happen is kind of like uh, when you run a kettle, uh, especially in a hard, hard water area. If you run a kettle, you get all those kind of uh, deposits that, that start to build up, all those kind of calcified deposits. And that can happen uh, inside your engine and in, inside your pipes as well. Uh, when you've got um, a product like this, a mixing water, a, a distilled or deionized water, what they tend to do is ext actually extract those minerals. Uh, so it's a much purer water. Uh, so it will minimize the, the chance of um, kind of things um, furring up on the inside of the engine. So that's something worth bearing in mind if you if you can don't use tap water uh, get yourself some some proper mixed water or mixing water deionized water distilled water uh, and use that much much better make sure you uh, read the instructions on the uh, the correct mix uh, for your coolant uh, it can vary a little bit manufacturer to manufacturer and it will uh, vary depending on uh, what country you live in Okay, and when your coolant's ready, uh, what you want to do ideally is place it higher than what you're uh, what you're trying to fill. That's why I'm putting it up on the, uh, the back kind of plenum chamber scuttle tree uh, just there. Uh, one another thing to bear in mind is uh, we know this system is probably going to take uh, at least five, uh, probably seven liters, something like that. Uh, the maximum uh, that we recommend for for this is eight. Uh, we don't always get the full recommended amount back in because yeah, so there's going to be traces uh, still left in there. So if you've got a larger container than five litres, you know, if you've got a 10 litre one, uh, that's ideal. Uh, on the Audi workshop manual, they recommend to uh, prepare eight litres. Uh, so eight litres is more than enough to do the job. So if you've got a 10 litre container, fill that up to eight litres. Uh, but the other thing you can do, as, as we'll do, is we'll take it down so it's nearing the bottom and then we'll turn the tap off, refill it and then repeat the process. Okay, so next you want to make sure that this valve is uh, is closed uh, before we connect up the, the air supply. Uh, obviously, if it's something that's closed, uh, it forms like a, a cross like that, so it shouldn't run parallel, it should be a cross. So that's to uh, that be open, and that'll be closed. Okay, so when we uh, connect up our um, our air supply, what we'll do is we'll connect this up, and once it's connected up, we'll uh, we'll slowly uh, open this, this tap. What will happen when we uh, release that tap, it will start to create the vacuum, so this needle will start to go up the gauge. And you want to check what the instruction manuals say uh, on your particular um, piece of kit uh, when you've bought it. But on this one, uh, we need to get the needle uh, between 20 and 25 on the uh, outer gauge, or between 50 and 60 on the uh, inner gauge. So somewhere kind of in, in that area there is uh, where we need to, uh, to get it. Once we get to the, that stage, we'll shut, shut the air supply back off. Next we can remove this little uh, vacuum pump uh, section, so we'll just get rid of that as well. So now at this stage we've uh, created the, uh, the vacuum in the system, what you want to do is you want to leave this for at least one minute, ideally two to three minutes. And what you want to do is just keep an eye on that gauge over those couple of minutes uh, just to make sure that that pressure isn't dropping. Uh, obviously, if that pressure uh, drops, uh, then chances are there's a leak in your system, and so you're going to have to do some further investigation uh, before you can um, top this back up successfully. Uh, so it's a good indicator that your uh, coolant system is in, in a good, healthy order. And what you'll notice when you do this, uh, if I can get a quick shot of where one this top uh, vacuum pipe here, you can see this vacuum pipe here has been sucked. Yeah, it's, it's basically flat. It's been sucked sucked flat and that'd be the same for the uh, the bottom hose and all the rest of the uh, the coolant hoses around the uh, the engine bay as well because there's a vacuum in there obviously those pipes apart from being round have been 
you know, literally sucked flat. Um, so again, uh, if your pressure's dropping, you'll start to see these uh, these hoses here will start to uh, round off again. Uh, but keep an eye on that. As you can see, ours is, uh, ours is staying pretty uh, rock steady, bang on uh, 55 on the inner gauge there. Um, so we're going to watch this for a couple of minutes, make sure we're happy, and then we'll move on, on to the refill section uh, once we know that we're good for the refill uh, to be completed. So now what you want to do is get your, uh, your coolant hose. Take uh, the end of it. Put that in. You want to make sure that goes right to the bottom. We'll hold it down there in, in a second. And the other end of it needs to be attached onto here, like so. So you can see the end of the tool is definitely at the bottom. Now when we uh, when we open the uh, the valve, now what will happen is the air will be displaced with the coolant. Uh, so the coolant will come down here and flow uh, flow through here, and the the pressure will uh, start to uh, to drop on the gauge. And basically, you'll know that the whole system's um, displaced. Uh, when that gets to zero, basically, it's displaced all the air uh, with coolant, and then you kind of top it up afterwards, as it were. Uh, but the thing is, uh, we know that this is likely to take more than five litres. So what you don't want to do is let it run out, because then you'll just be uh, sucking in air. So you want to watch this. When it gets down to about here, about that level there, safely above the level, what we're going to do is just dis, uh, remove that quickly, top this up again, and uh, uh, um, top it up again and repeat the process. Uh, so what you don't want to do is suck in air. Unfortunately, on, the, on this system, you're going to suck in a little bit of air to start with, uh, which is just the air that's kind of um, in the in the tube, if you like. Um, the Audi system that they use is a little bit more complex than this. Actually, has two valves on it uh, rather than just the one. And so, what you can do is you can suck a little bit of coolant into the hose before you begin the process because you can alternate the uh, alternate the valves. On these cheaper kits, these kind of DIY home kits like we're using uh, here, uh, that's not possible. So you are going to get that tiniest little bit of air that's uh, that's in the hose, uh, unless you want to, of course. Uh, Put your mouth around that and suck that, but I really, really wouldn't, would not recommend doing that at all. That's very, very poisonous. I shouldn't even joke about it, really. Don't, don't do that. Whatever you do, but it, it will uh, displace um, a little bit of um, a little bit of air into the system, uh, but only a tiny amount, so there's nothing to be concerned about. So there we go, it's doing the, uh, the fill process now. You can see that it's uh, it's draining it down. You can see this level uh, moving down here on the side of the bottle. And we can see that the uh, the pressure will, will slowly uh, go down as well. Okay, so uh, there we go. What tends to happen once it's sucked up as much as it's going to suck up, you'll get a little uh, air that will drop back into the pipe and it'll all kind of uh, equalize. You see on the gauge here, uh, it hasn't gone back to, um, to zero. Um, but it's gone back to the starting pressure, if that makes any sense. So if you rewind this video and have a look, uh, before we actually connected it to the air, uh, it, it wasn't sat on zero. It, it sat uh, around that level to begin with. So we know that we've gone back to where it started, if that makes any sense. There you go, so that's that valve uh, fully open. Uh, so there's no uh, pressure left in there. And as you saw, the gauge is still on the, uh, on the same setting. That's all. Uh, that's all done correctly. Okay. Now the next stage is uh, we've displaced the uh, the air uh, with the coolant, uh, so we know there's not going to be um, any uh, kind of air locks deep down in the engine, which is great. And now I've got to uh, top the levels up to the uh, the correct levels. Now uh, doing it the uh, the Audi uh, workshop way is a little bit complicated, uh, but I'll show you very very quickly. Basically, what you do. You remove your rubber seal and you remove your uh, scuttle tray panel. Just throw those out of the way. And what you'll see at the back there is there's actually a little bleeder valve uh, just here. Now, uh, as you can see, the bleeder valve actually sits higher. Uh, in the engine bay than your um, than your ideal level in your uh, reservoir. So what you have to do if you're doing it the Audi workshop way, they've got an additional um, uh, tool that they use at this stage that screws in uh, here 
it's like a, just like a tube. And what it, what it allows you to do, it allows you to fill this um, higher um, than full uh, to enable this to come out. So what you do is you remove, remove your uh, bleeder plug there, put some blue paper in below it, screw the, uh, the additional tube in, fill it, it'll come up the tube until it hits a level where it will start, start to come out of there. As soon as it starts to come out of the bleeder valve, you, uh, you put that back down and then you do the, um, the process that we're going to look at in a minute where you um, uh, put your heating on etc and that will draw that final bed in. That's not practical, um, it's obviously not many people are going to have a, a specific tube that screws onto there and is perfectly watertight. So we're going to do it the, uh, kind of the old fashioned way. So you can see just the bottom of our reservoir, uh, we've, this is kind of approximately where our uh, level is right now. So this is what we uh, need to top up. Okay, so now just fill it up until you hit your uh, your maximum mark. Uh, the reason that you're going to do uh, your maximum is because you know it's going to draw a little bit more back through the system uh, when you put the uh, the uh, heater on, uh, just like it would as if we're getting it through the bleed screw as per Audi Workshop uh, manual. So it's kind of the, the workaround. So don't worry about it being on max. You want to make sure you hit that max mark, not the minimum. So keep going until you're happy that it's on the maximum uh, mark just here. There it is, just coming up to max now. If you shine a torch in it, it kind of helps sometimes, you can see the difference in colour. And once you're at that level, uh, just screw your lid back in. Okay, so next what we're going to do, just put the ignition on, don't start the engine. And we're just going to uh, ensure that the uh, heater is running. About 30 seconds. So turn the temperature up. Okay, so the coolant itself is uh, changed. Now what we need to do is actually make sure that that gets pumped fully around the system. And then once that's done, you can do your final top up to your final level. Now to do that, what you need to do is start the engine. And once your engine started, what you wanna do is uh, put your foot on the accelerator and try and hold it at uh, 2000 RPMs. You gotta hold it there for about three minutes, which is quite a long time. Uh, once you've done that, uh, what you want to do is take your foot off the pedal, leave the engine running and just leave it idling at normal uh, normal engine speed. And then what you want to do is you want to keep an eye on the, uh, on the upper and lower hoses. Uh, that's the uh, obviously the upper one there. And the uh, lower one is the, obviously the one that you disconnected uh, to drain the coolant. And then with the engine uh, idling, uh, just um, keep an eye on these. And when they get kind of warm to the touch, uh, you're kind of nearing the end of the process. Once they're uh, warm to the touch. Uh, hop back on the uh, on the accelerator pedal. Uh, give it, uh, take it up to uh, 2,000 RPMs uh, again uh, for about one minute, and then uh, shut it down. Let the whole uh, system cool down um, for you know, a good couple of hours, ideally, or overnight would be even better. And then when you come back, uh, you can check the uh, check the reservoir and just uh, do a little bit of a top up uh, as is required. Uh, so just bear that uh, bear that in mind. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to our, our channel and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one.